everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be designing Unifix cubes using Tinkercad. And the reason we're going to be designing these is because if you have students in your classroom that are really involved with technology, they're going to enjoy this. More importantly, it's going to help give them the fundamentals of design, manufacturing, and production of these. Uh, essentially, the Unifix cubes are just little cubes that fit together. They lock. You can make them build things. And the reason I like to do this with my students is because it allows them a chance to use a 3D printer and gives them an opportunity to figure out how things work when we're being precise and accurate. And that's something we always want our students to focus on, our details. And that's th this is a good lesson to do that. Now, in my hand, you're going to notice I have a yellow and a blue one. The yellow one is the actual official cube designed by the Unifix. The blue one is one that one of my students has designed and 3D printed. I've done this all the way from uh, second grade up to fifth grade. So this is a good exposure level. And before we get started, one of the things you're going to need to help your kids do that is you're going to need a traditional computer mouse. And I know many of us don't have these in our classroom because we use maybe a Chromebook or some other type of laptop. But I would really encourage you to get this because it's going to give you access to some tools or uh, some ways to do things much more efficiently. So a computer mouse is great for. The next thing is we need to do some basic measurements like we always do. And I've already made some measurements of the Unifix cube here. We're going to be using these designs and these measurements to help us with the cube itself. Uh, it's important to get this as accurate as possible. I like to use metric with my kids because with fractions, it gets a little bit trickier. With this, it's going to be very easy. So make sure you spend some time with your kids having them design this. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to go over to the right side where uh, we have some designs already pre-made for us. The one we're going to choose is this box. Go ahead and drag the box over, put it anywhere on the work plane. And strangely enough, by default, Tinkercad automatically has these cubes set up to be 20 millimeters. So what that means is that I don't have to modify this at all because according to our because according to our measurements the cube is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So it's this will make the process much much easier. So I've got a cube here and you'll see that it's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters and if I wanted to go to this side here you'll see that the height is also 20 millimeters. We're going to start by dragging over a cylinder, but we're going to drag over a cylinder that is the hollow cylinder, and you'll notice that because it's gray and white. So go ahead and drag one of these over, and you'll notice you have a cylinder. The reason we have to make one of these cylinders is we have to punch a hole through the cube so we can actually create the holes. Now, in this case, we're going to have to set this to the right dimensions of the hole that we need. Think of this as being kind of like a drill bit. So what we're going to do, we know that the hole has to be, according to our uh, blueprint, has to be around uh, 8 millimeters to 8.5 millimeters. So what we're going to do, we're going to make some slight changes here. And you, when you, you hover over this square right here, you'll now notice it reveals the actual width. What we're going to do, if you hit the tab button, it will automatically allow you to come up here and begin typing. Our width had to be 8 millimeters, so 8 mm, and go ahead and hit enter or return. You'll notice you have this weird oblong shape. That's because we have to do all the sides. They all have to be 8 millimeters. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click this bottom square, and we're going to hit tab, and we're going to type in 8 millimeters. So now I have this. This is like I said, the, kind of like the drill bit that we're going to use to drill through. The problem with this is I have to make sure that this drill bit, so to speak, is going to be longer than the actual object because it's going to punch all the way through. I'm now going to go to a front view and you'll notice that if I click the top square here, it's going to reveal that this is 20 millimeters, which is exactly the same height as a cube, but I need it to be longer than the cube because I'm going through it. So. I'm going to click on that piece. I'm actually going to make this 30 millimeters because I like it to be a little bit longer to make sure it goes all the way through. What I would recommend at this point is to go back to a top view. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drill through this three times. Once through the side, once through the front, and once through the top. 
So it's easiest right now just to make three of these shapes. That way, when I go to put these through, I don't have to keep repeating them. So let's go ahead and hit Control C to copy, then Control V to paste. I've got two. Let's go ahead and make a third one. Three. I want to put two of these to the side for the moment. Click on the very first cylinder that we made, and we're going to just drag it over and place it right on top of the cube. It doesn't matter where you place it on the cube because now this is where a mouse is going to greatly help you. So, if you'll notice, this is not symmetrical. It's not in the center. A Unifix cube hole has to be right in the center. What we're going to do, we're going to highlight both of these. You'll see an option, that little window up here that says shapes. Above that, you're going to see a new option above that that says align. What we're going to do, we're going to hit align. When you hit the align button, you'll now notice that there are some circles here. This is so it will tell me where I want to align it. In this case, I want to center justify it, so I'm going to hit the center circle. I'm also going to do it for the side as well. So now, what you will see is I actually have a perfectly symmetrical hole punched through there. So now if you'll notice, this bit here that I have doesn't quite go all the way through. i got to make sure that it punches all the way through. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the cylinder. And you, there's an arrow here where you can just drag it down. I just need to drag it down a few millimeters. And when I do that, you'll now notice that it is completely through. So now we've got this box and it's got the drill bit through it. What we're going to do, we're actually going to highlight both the objects again. And this time, what we're going to do is before we are hitting the align button. This time we're going to group them. When we group them, it's going to merge them. And when I do that, here's what happens. I have a nice hole punched through it. So I'm going to repeat that same process of making a hole like I did here, but I'm going to make it go through the sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and click this tube right here. And when I do, you'll now notice Above it, there is an arrow that allows me to rotate. And so if I click that, and then I hit Tab, it's going to let me go back in and type which number I want to put in there for the angle, which is 90. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to make it nice and horizontal. Hit Enter. And now I have a tube that is 90 degrees. I got to repeat that same process as I did before with the tube. Now I have to actually align the tube in the box. So I'm going to hit the align button. Make sure that you align it on both sides. Highlight them again. And then group them. And ta-da! You've got a couple holes there. We've got this last tube here. We're going to repeat the process. We're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. So 90 degrees. Enter. Now, I also have to rotate it on its y-axis because it currently it's going to go straight in as the other one did. We need it to go through the front and back. So you'll notice there's actually an, an arrow that will let you rotate on the y-axis. It's near the bottom. You click that. And so now I have a cylinder that's been rotated 90 degrees. Drag it over, put it through the center, highlight both objects, hit align. And there it is so far. Let's go ahead and now hit that group button. And this is what we have. We have a cube with different holes in it. These holes will allow us to connect other Unifix cubes. But unfortunately, this one is still missing the top cap. Now, this time around, what we're going to do, we're actually going to create a cylinder that goes in the top. And we're going to plug this, but we're going to make this according to our measurements. It's 4 millimeters. We're going to come over here and we're going to bring over another cylinder. And whoa, look at the size of that cylinder. That is just way, way too big. All right, so we have the cylinder now. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to make it the correct dimensions so when we put this in there, it'll act as the cap. We also have to make sure that we put it through here in the cube that it's also going to block 
the center. The reason we want to do that is because when we go to 3D print this, if I just have a small cube at the top up here, there's a likelihood that it won't be printed correctly or it will snap off immediately because there's not enough material to attach it to the base. So what we're going to do, we have to click on that cylinder and we're going to make it the correct dimensions and we're going to leave it at 20 millimeters high. We're going to change this into 8.5 millimeters. And we have to do it to the other side as well. So now we have a great looking cylinder there. And we're going to take this cylinder and we're going to drag it over. And we're going to pull it up by 4 millimeters. And so now we have 4 millimeters. That's it. That is our cube. Now we have a, the cylinder embedded in the center of this cube. We're going to go ahead and highlight both of them, and we're going to align it because we need that peg to be aligned with the bottom of another cube. So we're going to align it nice and neat. And now you'll notice I have a cube. And we're going to go ahead, highlight it again, and we're going to group it all together. And now there you go. We have a perfect replica of a Unifix cube that we can export as an STL file to send to a 3D printer. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them below. Thanks for watching.